Yeah, Jeff Williams, bro. Jeff Williams, that man has soul. I don't know what happened to him in his life. I don't know how, who taught him how to make music, but that man knows soul. You nasty. What's up, Nasty Cast? It's your man behind the cam, aka Director Nasty, here for Ruby Reaction Volume 2 Original Soundtrack. Volume 2 was dope. It was awesome. So what we're going to do is the same thing we do at the end of every volume. We're going to go through the, the soundtrack, the OST, and we're going to pick up the vibes that we missed out on. Just have a good time. Volume 2 was really interesting because it took a turn that I didn't expect multiple times. I thought we're going to just dive deeper and deeper into like the festival and the fighting between, you know, the tournament. But we end up going on a whole nother tangent of, you know, figuring out what the White Fang is doing protecting Faunus, talking about the rights and the history of Remnant, which was super dope in my opinion. Awesome. So a lot of this music is going to reflect those values and those thought processes. So I'm really excited just to get into it. If you made it this far and you haven't already, go ahead, drop a sub on the channel, drop a like on the video. We turn out three reactions a week on the channel. So make sure you turn on post notifications because some of those are Ruby. Some of those are Ruby. If you want to catch me live, I'm live on Twitch every Monday, Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Check the top pinned comment and description below for all my socials, including my Discord, my Reddit, and the Patreon, where you can find unreleased, unedited reactions. Ruby Volume 2 OST Reaction coming up next. Hey, just a quick thank you to all the subs on the channel. You members of the Nasty Cast are the driving force that makes all this possible. Catch Director Nasty on Reddit. Patreon, and all other socials in the description below with links. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. I forgot, I don't have to have that on. Ooh. I swear, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but do they turn it up in the OST? I feel like there's extra instruments and, like, beats and drums right now. I feel like this is not the same song from the intro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is all extra, bro, for sure, for sure, for sure. I never heard this part. Yeah, let's get it. I like the lyrics, bro. Mm. Drop, drop, drop right here. Yeah, I do fucks with this, man. I do. I stand by what I said. I don't think it's as good as season one's, uh, season one's inch opening. But it's fine. I do mess. I do fuck with this one, too. I do. All of them look like they have the Ren and Gone right now. Oh, what's the huge lie? <laughs> Insightful. Yes. Yo, they really been really taking this beat everywhere, man. Yo, that rift is wild, bro.
That's me. I don't got much. That's on God. Tell him, Ruby. Tax. I mean, I hope not. Shit. I do like the synth on this, too. Give this man a raise! God damn! Whew. This is perfect fight music. Like, I would throw uppercuts to this. This is dark as fuck, though. This reminds me of Metalocalypse. Death Claps. That's some Death Claps, baby. Oh, it's my shoddy Prius song. Hey, that's that disco. Hey, 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 drop it. Yeah, this is going to be about. That's it too soon? Nah, it's gonna be a bop. I was cold in the dark, it was empty in my life. Mm. Sing it, shout it. On the outside, it looked so bright, but nothing felt right. This is that 90s R&B feel. Like Ooh. a sky with no sun, like a night that mm. has no day. Mm. My heart was eclipsed by the dark, then something. You feel the building, right? Hey, 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 hey. 
said you gotta say now you just hit with the woo hit her with the song Yeah, Jean. Look at her. Go ahead, sim for him, girl. Hey, who got that funk on the bass? I fucked with you, man. That's a lot of pressure to put on him, but you deserve it, girl. Tell him. Yeah, hit on the chorus. Why won't you love her, Jean? God damn you! Yeah. Damn! Get some there! You came in your best Sunday dress, boy. Oh, word? Word? Oh. Word? You gonna swallow? Oh. Ooh, I do like this one. Ooh, yeah. Hey, that's that shit, though. Right, Shawty. Shawty, 
this song goes hard because it's one of those songs any guy can uh, identify with, man. You just want a shoddy. You just want a shoddy who's down for you, bro. He's gonna hold you down, man. That's what Pira is. She's like, I let me. See? So unrealistic, but I want it. You better, boy. Oh, drop that beat, baby. You gotta show them what that mouth do, that's it. I swear he gonna notice. We gonna make him notice. We'll make sure he's paying attention. He can get away with this mess. Coco Velvet. Oh, this is about. Oh, this is when she literally pulled up with the Gaddy, bro. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be fire. Yo, this song is freaking. This is the type of shit that makes me want to play football again. Hype, son. This is crazy. This song is so intense, bro. I love it though. Fred, to take you out. Don't worry, Shadow. I'll take you out too. We'll go get a nice dinner. I'll let you out by the beach. We'll get some ice cream cones. We'll play some sand tackle. Maybe I'll let you tackle me. I don't know. Hey. Have me with it, hang it with Joe. Go. Oh, that could have been bad, oh, man. Oh, I was waiting for the punchline at the end of that verse, bro. That was kind of cucking. Bad Joe, let's go. Oh, man. I feel like they could have done, they kind of hit something better there. Oh, that's fine, though. It's fire, though.
Oh no! Don't hit me with that cry no jutsu! Oh, it's Yang and a daddy. Sad. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Hit me with the sad, bro. I'm not ready. She's talking about Ruby right here? And on that day, I made a vow whispered and true. No matter what, no matter how, I made this promise to you. I will cling, I will clutch, Beautiful. Years of joy have passed since then. With time, I see you. Is this song about Ruby? I think it is. Oh, I lied. This is either Yang's dad or mom singing this to her. so sad and so full that's what i love about that's what i say about ruby all the music that they make it's very soulful and that's why i think it speaks to so many different people like you can feel you can like poof Yeah, Jeff Williams, bro, Jeff Williams, that man has soul. I don't know what happened to him in his life. I don't know how, who taught him how to make music, but that man knows soul, and Casey can sing some soul, bro. This is, like, the type of talent at a young age that you can't find, man. Like, there's, there's grown music artists who struggle to find the kind of emotion in music that they're executing right now, you know what I mean? I think, I think that's the crazy. Oh, no run run. Best girl 
Oh, is that what their relationship is? Hmm. I was trying to figure out, because they're clearly friends, close. Somebody wants something, but I couldn't figure it out. Right? Nora and Ren? It seems so wrong, but so right. Right? This is a total Nora song. It's so playful. Say boop. I get it. Aww. What's a shadow lane? What a big word. With Megan Hill, don't faint. Aw, oh, listen, I'm looking forward to more Nora and Ren. Now that I have a better understanding, they're just longtime friends. Or maybe Ren's been friend zoned it, and she's coming around, and she's like, oh man, do I like him? I think it's something all guys can identify with. Girls, too, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I've never escaped a friend zone before. I want to know. I said Oh, it's dark. This is some wrestling music, WWE. Interesting. What song is this? Deity. 
This song is creepy, but it fucks with it. it. All these songs have so much truth to them. No matter how creepy they are, they all have some truth to them. I think that's probably my least favorite one so far, but it still had its truth to the music, for sure. Hey, 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 okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, bad guys, get it. Hey. No, boo, boo. Who the fuck put this here? Nah, fuck these guys. Look at them basic assholes. I get the card in the fuck out of here, bro. Who the, you thought you were funny? Garbage, don't cheer for them. Oh God, go ahead, Glenn the Shouty, get it. Get it, Shouty. Yo, look at Oz Penny. What you got that cane for, buddy? What you need the cane for? I don't know. Oh my god. No, y'all did not make this man Ironwood come through like this, bro. I like the guards though. Go, Penny, get it, girl. Ironwood would never, bro. This is hilarious. Hey, other bad guys. Adam, what it do? We can tuxedo mask gonna be. Okay, okay, okay. Really? All right. Who did this? Look at this shit. Look at this shit. <laughs> Who did this shit with the boar, bro? Who put the boar in this bitch? Ha <laughs> 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 I was ready for that. Whew. It all began, as most things do, with war. Of course. The kingdoms of the world had been locked in a violent struggle for years. But eventually, the Great War of Remnant came to an end on the small island of Vital. Oh. It was here that humanity's leaders chose peace over bloodshed. And Good. The future of modern society. Establishing new laws, new academies, and new traditions. The Vital Festival was created to serve as a celebration of peace between the kingdoms. Every two years, a kingdom would be chosen to open its doors to the world, allowing citizens from every corner of Remnant to meet and indulge in one another's cultures. Good! I actually like that a lot. This event was the Vital Festival Tournament. After the newly formed Huntsman Academies proved to be a success, the Vital Festival Tournament was designed to test the strengths of the Kingdom's warriors in a safe and friendly competitive environment. It's never friendly, it though. In which ...to ensure that the world's Huntsmen would never settle for mediocrity, but would constantly strive to become the absolute best they could be. Yeah, the most powerful to destroy other nations, the no? Grew. So did the games. And in time, 
it was decided that the tournament would need a stage equal in greatness to that of its competitors. Well, damn. Amity Coliseum was the culmination of the Four Kingdoms' efforts, a technological marvel and a shining symbol of harmony, capable of making the journey to all the kingdoms of Remnant. It's a moving stadium? And all of this began with war. That's fire. But it is peace that has served to shepherd humanity on its ascension to greatness. Where's the foreshadowing? Or was that the foreshadowing? I don't know. May we never stray from that path. There it is! There it is! Huntsmen and huntresses, the best and brightest warriors of Remnant, ranking higher than kingdom police and even military in terms of strength Damn. and skill. I think I knew that, though. Alongside the Huntsman Academies after the Great War, with the hope of creating elite warriors whose sole purpose would be to combat the creatures of Grim. Beacon Academy was founded in Vale. Haven founded in Mistral. Shade founded in Vacuo, and Atlas founded in the now defunct kingdom of Mantle. Oh, these institutions accepted graduates of primary it's the font who showed enough interesting to, to not only battle the world's deadliest creatures but also protect their fellow man. Protect your fellow man grouped into teams, ensuring the continual development of communication and Ruby. Traits that are vital to any guardian of peace. As an additional precaution to maintaining peace, the founders of the academies believe that their graduates should be kept separate from kingdom allegiance. Once finished with their training, huntsmen and huntresses are free to choose who they work for, as well as what kind of work they will do through the use of missions. I like that! Allying with a particular kingdom or village is entirely up to the individual. However, Atlas Academy That's has dangerous. gone under increasing amounts of scrutiny for the indoctrination of military lifestyle upon its students, pressuring them to enlist in the Atlas military's special. Oh, teams. there it is. Every academy. Ironwood. Teacher, but the end result is the same: huntsmen and huntresses ready to make their own paths. Some will stay together. That's the foreshadowing. People from Atlas. Are just recruited right into the military humanity. instead of serving humanity. To the darkness. So I'm coming to the darkness. Who's going to? Of the years, the world of Remnant has seen hundreds of technological advances that have changed society. The most influential of all of them being the cross. The CCTS. System. Prior to the invention of the CCTS. Long range communication was I just kind of guessed it, but that was dope. The discovery and development of radio technology allowed for communication within the boundaries of most kingdoms. But communication with other parts of the world was restricted to the physical delivery of messages. Jeez. With every alternative form of communication that was proposed, there seemed to be the perfect obstacle. Damn, Grimm's. The nature of the creatures of Grimm severely limited the reliability of ground-based technologies. The concept Damn, of relay bro. satellites orbiting around the planet was promising. Unfortunately, modern man has yet to make the technological advancements required to achieve spaceflight. As all Wait. The dust types lose their power as they begin to leave Remnant's atmosphere. Okay. Eventually, they explained it. Atlas, the world's leader in science and technology that developed the cross-continental transmit system. It was revolutionary. Like radio, signals were sent and received wirelessly, though the content of these transmissions were not nearly as limited. Audio, video, images, and text were... Wi-Fi! ...transmission, and eventually an entire online... Wi-Fi. ...was at mankind's... The internet. Okay. Currently, the system is supported by four primary relay towers each located within a safeguarded area of the kingdoms. These towers allow for wireless communication within a kingdom through the use of devices mm. such as scrolls. The signals become less reliable the farther a user travels from the CCT tower. 
Makes and sense. smaller support towers do exist outside of kingdoms, they are constantly at risk of destruction by the creatures of Grimm. Jesus. Aside, for the first time in history, digital transmissions between kingdoms were possible through the use of slightly more advanced devices, typically found in homes. And yeah, that's what Weiss was doing. The cross-continental transmit system. Oh, and, and that's where they broke into. However, if one of the four towers is taken offline, the entire network fails with it. A slight inconvenience during routine maintenance, but to be honest, I find the limitation somewhat poetic. No one voice is louder than the others, and no voice may be silenced without the rest. If the people mm. come to speak, then they shall do so together. Mm. Or not at all. Mm. Yeah! Yo, listen, I'm gonna keep it a bean, I'm gonna keep it a buck, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. I like watching the world of remnant things. Not only because you get good information, but because it is so very, very, very foreshadowing. Talking about if one tower goes down, they all go down, the poetic justice. Talking about how people are recently mad at Atlas because uh, when, they're, when their hunters and huntresses graduate, they are trying to conscript them into the military directly, even though they're free to take on whether, whatever missions they want, go to whether whatever country they want, it makes them a very interesting politics, does it not? And I like how they also explained why they haven't made it to space because dust is powerful, but when you use it to leave the atmosphere, it loses its power. I'm like, you mean to tell me y'all got flying airships, but y'all can't make it to space? But then they explained it. So it's like, I want to be mad, but I can't be mad because it's it's well explained. That's all fire. And of course, the OST for Volume 2 was oh, Chef Kiss Fuego. Oh, man. So many good ones. But I think my two favorite songs from the OST was Pira's song and Neuron Run's song. Those two absolute bops hit me right in the soul. I love it. I love disco, and it's very disco, very poppy, very... And the messaging in a lot of the songs are... I, I understand... And this is gonna sound weird, right? But I'm gonna say, I understand why men like this series and enjoy the OST. Because the OST for this series, uh, the, the music is very like supportive. It's like women saying like, oh, I, I want you in my life. I've been looking for someone like you. Won't you please notice me? We're not, I can't speak for other men, but we're not very often in those situations where like, we're being simped after. And some of the music was like, for lack of a better term, it was simping music. I love me some simping music, yo. Uh, so like, it, it was dope. I, I enjoyed a lot of the music. Uh, some of the songs were a little out of my genre, but I do love that the lyrics for all these songs are always very directed, pointed, and have them and have a direct meaning. Like they're literally telling story through the music. And I know that sounds weird, because you're supposed to be storytelling through music, but I feel like they're literally telling the story of Remnant in the music, but also like, you know, narrating what's happening. And I I, I just thoroughly enjoy it. That's just me. But hey, if you made this fun, you haven't already, drop a sub on the channel, drop a like. We turn out three reactions a week on the channel, including, of course, your favorite Ruby. So be sure you turn on those post notifications so you know when something goes up. If you want to catch me live, I'm live on Twitch every Monday and Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Check the top pinned comment and the description below for all my socials, including Discord, the Reddit, and of course the Patreon, where you can find uncut, unreleased, future episodes made for YouTube that you can get early access to. I'm your man behind the cam, and as always, never forget, stay nasty, y'all. You nasty.